Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Pet Peeves Podcast. This is Albert Escobedo. We have a very, very special guest for you today. Uh, the one and only Brad Wilson. Brad contacted me. He's making a film, The Furry Fortune, based off of a popular children's book. And we're just really happy to have you here. Brad, how's it going? Good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You know, I was, uh, I, I got your name and all, and I, and I said, man, I love the Spanish speaking community, the Hispanics and all, Alberto Escambido. And then I find out you're Korean. Ha, not true. I'm Mexican. <laughs> oh, are you? Somehow I, I thought you were Korean. I, no, I lived in South Korea for a few years. I was uh, teaching English and doing stand up comedy. Oh, so I that's it. Yeah, so I spent some time there and I do have a lot of Korean stories and content in my comedy and in like all the, my social media stuff. So I can see somebody making that confusion. But no, I'm thought, 100% Mexican American. All oh, lives. I love that, man. I was thinking that, wow, this is where the comedy starts, man. We've got a, a Korean with a Spanish name, you know, with well, a Hispanic exist, name. Those Filipinos. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but no, well, man, I, it's, it's great to. I to am be. pretty ethnically ambiguous, so that, that's not your fault. Oh, God. I'm actually from another country originally. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm in L.A. and it's a real melting pot. I'm, I'm from Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, heard yeah. I've heard. I've heard tales. People always take the bait. You know, I'll say, yeah, I'm from another country. We are Texas. Yeah, it's damn near. It's I, well, you know, L.A., man, L.A. is like another country. It too. is. It's true. I'm from Indiana, yeah. so I'm like, it, it's very different, too. Like, the difference between California, Indiana, and Texas is probably about yeah. as different as it gets. Yeah, huge man. It really is. Well, I'm thrilled to be here, and and uh, and and just uh, I'm glad to meet you, and and really happy to talk about our film. Yeah, me too. I'm really glad uh, that you guys chose this podcast, the Pippi's podcast. We're we're a huge proponent of anything animal, animal related. And I was reading your guys's uh, about your movie. Your it's a it's a crowdfunding project that that yeah. really caught my attention. You know, my podcast is a lot of comics listen to it, a lot of comics as guests. And we're always looking for ways to make a, a, a dream come true without having to ask, you know, like I saw your articles going around the Hollywood accounting. And yeah. That, and that I really would love to talk more about how you guys uh, got the idea for a crowdfunded movie and then why you chose a, a dog book originally. What, what, where did the dog book, like, did you read this book and decide? Is that how yeah. it was? Yeah, I actually, it, 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 it's like, who, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Exactly. The book actually came first. And uh, uh, I met the writer in Texas, by the way. By the way, if you hear a noise back there, that's my dog who, who fights with, with her food. D <laughs> does your dog do that? Just fight with a bowl? No, I, it must not be my some dog, kind of, but I know dogs do it. Why did they do that? Is it because uh, like some kind of animal instinct that they're getting their I think that they, they like to work for their food, that it's not really, it's not natural for them to just have food laying out. So I think a lot of dogs just get I bored. Did. They get bored and they just make a game, a toy out of everything. Why not their food? I see. That makes and sense, then it's super man. rewarding. You know, they get to eat. They get to eat the game. So it's very, very rewarding and behavior. Good. Man, you just saved me a fortune in dog therapy. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate hey, it. You're welcome. Man. That's what the podcast is for. Let's help people. Well, I, I met this writer in Dallas. Uh, it's uh, and, D. Good Morgan. Yes, D. Good okay. Morgan, otherwise known as Donna Morgan, who oh, wow. uh, is also going to be the, uh, or is the executive producer on the film. And, uh, you know, I'm an independent film producer. I, I've been in the film business for 35 years, and I think done some, been involved with like 40 films. I, oh, I, I wow. lose count. I don't look bad for 23, do I? I mean, the film it's business has been pretty good, been good to yeah. me. Uh, but, um, it, this, 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 I, this book and this idea about a dog that sheds money mm -hmm. and, and, and it, it takes you through a summer and, and the people are going nuts. They're like buying boats and cars and all kinds of stuff. But then at the end of the film, you find out that they find out that, that it's not about money. Life is about family, you right. know? Which I really love. I I, I, I try to uh, I, I tried to make kind of a, 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 a not a change. I mean, I, I've done different movies, but I've tried to really concentrate on projects and films that uplift the human spirit. I mean, as as corny as it may sound, I mean, I, I'm a film producer, and people that I'll I'll never see in this lifetime will see my movies, and I, I feel a responsibility. You know, I want to do good stuff. No, and, I think uh, you're, 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 you're doing the right thing. When I read the, 
the description, the summary that it's a family film. And I was like, yeah, yeah. we need, we need more of that. More Man, of that. Man, you're not kidding. You're, do you have kids yourself? I have a stepson and then my wife and I, we are, we're working on a kid. That's good. That's good. And uh, no, none myself. My stepson is 20 though. So he's hardly a child. Oh, good. Well, you, you, if, if you guys are fortunate enough to have kids, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, I have two daughters and they're, you know, they're one will be 20 on Monday. And, uh, and then I have another daughter. She's 24 uh, going on four. And, and uh, when, they, when they were young, man, you know, you go to movies and you just cross your fingers. Oh my God, what's going to come up. So mm -hmm. I hear you. I, I mean, I think family, movie and these distributors who you know who distribute our film man they'll always say find me a family movie find me a family yeah. movie and, oh, and then, i think so yeah so it anyway more, it should be more trendy more mainstream I, i've been a teacher for a long time teaching all ages and i do think for it you. Makes a difference. The, the content the media that the children are exposed to it absolutely makes a difference and we all so, love the disney movies growing up so it's not like there's something wrong with that niche exactly. there's nothing yeah. wrong with that niche if you do it right and this crazy town out here, this Hollywood, you know, it's just amazed me sometimes how, how things just go right over their head. You know, some of them, you know, they want to do these bigger kind of shoot 'em up blockbuster kind of thing. Yeah, but any time a family movie is released, it goes to number one. But I don't know. It's just they yeah, don't but one movie you could take your whole family to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. A bit of an advantage there. It, it's crazy. So. Um, I did a movie. I've got a movie out now. Uh, it, 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 it was a smaller uh, theatrical, regional theatrical across the country, and it's on Amazon Prime now, and it's called The Meanest Man in Texas. Greatest okay. title I've ever had for, for a movie. But uh, it, it's a, yeah, and it's, it, it's a true story. It's pretty rough, but, it, but it's very positive and uplifting, it, believe it or not, with that title. But anyway, the guy that directed that movie, uh, I brought on, and he's going to direct the furry fortune and his okay. name's justin ward and he took the book and wrote the screenplay he's a great writer and a really really good director so he'll be directing the movie and uh, so we got a, we have a really nice script and um um we have the uh, song uh, uh, the, the, the legendary songwriter composer steve dorf I saw uh, that. come on board to do the the music and i'm guessing all these people love dogs is that how you're selling they it? do yeah, yeah. So. well they love they love me you know yeah, so they're, they're, hey, no. you're, you're lovable i like no, you already no. man you're from texas i like it <laughs> my wife is from El Paso, texas before we oh, uh, before who, i who say that my wife is that my brother-in-law's from el paso hey isn't that something yeah almost related Boy, that's true. God bless them. They're having a tough time over there with that. Yeah, virus. yeah, it's true. The COVID numbers are way up. That's oh, true. Oh, my God. It's just horrible. And, and it's weird. You you know, you think it's just on the news, but people like my wife's friends, and they're really getting it. So it's really oh, scary. totally. I know. I know. Well, my uh, my uh, nieces and nephews, they, they live over in Midland, and, and uh, two of them go to college in uh, Lubbock at Texas Tech. Okay. And they, they're, they're getting over it now. I mean, I, it's wow. just it's it's horrifying you know it's yeah that's just, that keeps coming up in the podcast since march obviously so the the covid comes up in conversation i'd love to talk about it more but i don't want to get off the topic of the movie with the the director you were talking about the writing the screenwriting it's just going to be a great project yeah. Did, i yeah. saw that it's a live action movie that's oh that yeah surprising to me too yeah yeah it's not animated it's live action and uh it it's uh it, of course steve it, Oh my gosh! Here's a here's the thing uh, about the, the music. You know, Steve Dorff is one of our, our legendary yeah, songwriters. Dorf, I read that. In, like, wow, that's a big deal. Huge man. Well, one of his best friends is another legendary songwriter, Paul Williams, and together they've written they've written the music of our lives. You know, wow. well, he and Paul are writing a song for the movie, like a theme song. So that's huge, wow. man. That's awesome. That's huge, yeah. yeah. And then. Um, uh, this this sort of like uh, came in our life. You know, uh, you're, you're young, but but uh, you know, years ago there was a famous television series on called Batman, yeah. and uh, it was Adam uh, West Batman. Adam West and Burt Ward, and Burt played Robin. Oh, well, wow. Burt's a, he uh, later started a dog food company called oh. Gentle Giants, oh, wow. and as it turns out, it's like. I think the number two or three fastest growing dog food company in the country. It's in every Walmart store. It's in Target. It's, it's unbelievable. And, and he, he and his wife, uh, uh, they adopt 
out Great Danes and, and other dogs too, but Great Danes. So they, they, they worked with scientists and invented this dog food. Albert, they're saying these dogs live, can live up to 27 years old. With this dog food. Really? It's unbelievable. That it's is, un that's unreal. That's and I've had long talks with Bert about it. Well, anyway, I, I originally contacted him. Um, I knew his manager and I, and I knew about this dog food. So I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could have like a promotion and maybe when the movie comes out, ha have a flyer or, 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 you know, or like a, a little poster in all of the packages of the gentle giant dog food, you know? Absolutely. Well, long story short, we made a deal with Bert and uh, uh, we're going to do that. But then Donna, the, the, the writer and the director and I started talking and we said, wouldn't it be funny if we could get Bert to do a cameo in the film, you know, as, as yeah. maybe Robin or so yeah. long story short, he's going to do it. That's and amazing. so, that is yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. And uh, he's a great guy and, and he and his wife are very serious about dog health and they're actually going to give us some little tips to, to kind of organically put in the movie. Like one thing I, I was going to ask about that. Are you going to add stuff to the movie about some pet health and the food? Yeah. Yeah. In organically in an entertaining way, sure, but like sure. this, who knew I didn't know this, but, but you, you're not supposed to, you're, you're supposed to elevate the dog's food instead yeah, so of they're, so not leaning over to eat. Yeah. It causes did, mega you, did you know that? Yeah. I'm an RVT veterinary technician. I got to know. Oh, that's stuff. right. That's right. Oh, well, I mean, I, got, I, I talk for hours to these people about dog health. You know, it's really interesting. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it is something that I didn't always know. I didn't always know about elevating the dogs when they're eating, but it's the big dogs with the big necks where they have more distance to cover. Yes. Over. Like a little dog doesn't have a lot of distance to cover, but a big dog yeah. has like four feet that they got. And then they got to fight gravity when they're swallowing. So it causes. Yeah, exactly. in their and Then they have a lot of digestive problems, a lot of reflux. Totally. It's exactly what he told me. Exactly. And man, here's one for you. Here's a new one. He and his wife live with 50 dogs. They have 50. 50. Most Five of them great. I, I, I asked him, I was talking to him last night. I said, man, you know, when you get in the bed, I mean, do they like cuddle you? He said, there's 50 dogs in the bed. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes, they're all pushed to the corner. Yeah, yeah. Those. But man, we've got some real positive things going on about the film. And, uh, you know, about the crowdfunding, I'd love to, to talk with you about that. I mean, yeah, it's... Sure. A, you know, I, I've been in, I've been in this game a long time in Hollywood, and uh, it's um, it, it's it's not easy. And and some of the people and some of the things that go on in this town are just, I, I, it's not my, you know. I tell people, I thank God I was born in Texas. You know, I at least yeah. have some morals about me. You, you know? have some independence, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I uh, <laughs> just to give the listeners an idea of what you're talking about. So you guys crowdfunded this whole film, and you got a, you got more than you asked for. It's just a huge success correct we're pretty close yeah we're still we're still raising money okay. and uh, and we have uh, uh, just a little more time to go and I, and in fact uh, our uh, attorney who's uh, I'll tell you about he's our crowdfunding attorney he called me before the interview he said now if you can just say investfurryfortune.com about 50 times during the during the, the interview he said it'll be great you know it'll be great but that is the the place to go investfurryfortune.com yeah, I posted it on the Facebook post and I'll post it in the Instagram and Twitter also. So oh, bless your heart. Hopefully it will Thank come you. out on Monday. Uh, what is that? November, what, 15th? Or what's Monday? No. I, oh, well, it's the uh, uh, 16th because it's my 16th. daughter's birthday. Right. So, yeah. 16th. And it's just uh, that is our last week. And and uh, it's, it's real interesting. It, this is a whole new thing, man. This this uh, uh, equ It's called equity credit. Crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is a great thing. You know, you, you, you throw it, say you throw in a hundred dollars or something, you get an autograph script and all of that, which is nice. This equity crowdfunding, it's a new kind of thing. It's, it's not, it's not been done for movies as far as I know. I think we're the first ones to do it, but you get all the stuff you get in crowdfunding. I mean, you know, we have our perks and all of that, but you're also owning a piece of the movie equity crowdfunding. Yeah, it makes so much sense. And, and, the, and you know, the thing, uh, there are many things I like about it, but, you know, like I have to raise, I'm an independent producer. I was in the studio system for years, but I, I got out of that, got into the independent world for different reasons. I think it's more, in, more interesting projects, but, but usually investing in a film is, is cost prohibitive to, to like regular 
regular guys and girls like us, you know, I mean, you got to be, you got to be pretty wealthy, but this brings it down. I mean, for a, as little as a hundred dollars, you can own a piece of this movie, you know, which I love that. I that's love it. That's it's, it's open to everybody. And this town, uh, Hollywood, you probably read about it. They, they have their own uh, uh, Hollywood uh, bookkeeping system. Like for instance, the movie Forrest Gump, that thing has done over $600 million at the box office. And to this day, the studio claims it still has not been into profits. That's what? Impossible. It's <laughs> yeah. impossible. It's impossible. The, the, the writer, the guy that wrote the script had to go all the way to the Supreme Court with it. And uh, it's, I think Veronica Mars might be another one that was in that. And so they, they have, a, I don't, I just don't like that, you know? And Absolutely. the thing about this, this, the way we're doing this, this crowdfunding, it's very, it has to be very transparent because it's going through the SEC. And I've always been honest, you know, I, I always thought I have, you know, but man, I'm telling you what, this, this, this transparency you have to do this way is just a, a whole other level of honesty. And, and I like it though. And so we're, we're going to be in a situation that on our website, investors will have a, a, a special place they can go and they'll be able to see every penny that's spent and every penny that comes in. It, it very well could be the, the new way to raise money for independent films. The studio system will never go for it because it to be transparent, you know, and they're never, but for guys like me, man, and I, I love that. And I love yeah. to get people involved, you know, that, that, the, you know, regular people. Absolutely. I think it's yeah, great. I saw that in, uh, just to, yeah, we, we love that about anybody. We're trying to do that ourselves in comedy, you know, in comedy, we yeah. are, we're waiting for an HBO special or a Showtime special, but now with the internet, we can record our own specials and put them out yeah. on YouTube or on Spotify or whatever platforms that we want and then get work from that, that we own yeah. all of it. We own it all. We want to make merch. We can do that. Yeah. And, we, and it's all like funded by people that watch the content or paying like a dollar a track or $5 yeah. for the album or whatever straight to us. So that's how a lot of yeah. our friends are doing it now. And that's pretty new. Yeah. I'd say that's since like 2017, maybe. Oh, really? Because I was going to want not to harp on the COVID, but I wondered if this had if that had something to do with this whole new thing you're doing, because we've been stuck inside, no, but it's I been going it was, on for uh, a lot of things. I think it was just the social media movement, you know, where people were just able to build a following and build a brand by yeah. themselves. I think that we, as comedians, I speak for us all, sorry, comics out there that we just saw other people doing what we knew we could do better. Yeah. Like, who's better at, at content, short, funny, interesting things online than comics that's what oh, we do all day write jokes it's a, so, it's a great idea and absolutely. and 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 look, look i listen i know i know a lot about the music business and sometimes i think that's worse than the film business the way they take advantage of you you know and and so i'm sure you know bypassing some of that kind of thing yeah, the absolutely. record industry and dis distribution that's gonna that's gonna help you a lot so you so so you'll uh, now I'm going to, I'm turning the interview. I'm interviewing you now. Fine, but, so, so it. you'll, you'll turn it around to where you'll be able to self distribute you and Absolutely, others. Right. So you want it That's to have really right. high production value, really high quality sound, yeah. really high quality video, really yeah. good editing, really good, all that. And then you can put little clips online and you'll get thousands and thousands and thousands of views yeah. on like Instagram yeah. and TikTok. Or, you know, you couldn't do that doing regular shows, even no. before COVID. Before COVID, yeah. you'll go do a show and there might be, you know, a hundred people there. That's a good show for you. But yeah, you of course. You on the internet and it gets 6,000 views in an hour. You're like, yeah. I got to keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, that's, that's so great and so interesting. I mean, things are just, are, are just turning in another direction now. And I, I just think it's great. That yeah, me too. I put out a comedy special on YouTube for free, an hour long special in 2017. And I was blown away at the, at the, success of it like i really expected sure nothing are. and it went really really well and then a lot of my friends got inspired to do their own specials and of course they all did them better they saw what i did wrong and improved on yeah. it and now all theirs are doing great and it's like we're just starting a new trend where comedians know that we don't have to wait for that big budget we don't have to wait yeah. if you have a talent other people will back you up a lot of people worked for me for free on the project they just wanted yeah. to be involved just yeah. like you're saying if you can invest a hundred dollars that's nothing and you can have an ownership of a successful movie that sounds like a very very good investment 
I see. I, I think so too. That's exactly what I was thinking. Cause I thought, you know, what I, I, you know, you can never prom, I never, promise anything because if you promise something you're lying you know right, but right. the chances are, are very good uh and i'll tell you why because it's probably the same thing you chances very good uh these investors are not only going to get their money back but make a dollar or two and and I, and i was thinking going in this it, god forbid if they were to lose everything it'll be the best most fun hundred dollars they would have ever lost I don't believe that it's gonna, they're going to lose, and here's why. One thing I've learned, and, and, and you may be experiencing this or have yourself, you, you've got to keep the, the quality as high as humanly possible, but the budget's as low as possible. Yes, yes. You the competition have to do out that. there, and that's the secret, because the competition, hopefully you're outsmarting them. It's hard to outwork oh, a bunch of other hardworking people. You have absolutely. To you've got to do something different. And what happens is people get, I don't know about in your business, but in my business, you know, ego starts taking over and people get sucked in. Oh, we want to do a $10 million movie or 20 million. Man, that's the kiss of death. You know, it's, it's just, it, it, you, and, and like this movie, no money, no Man problem, Texas, they say, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and it just makes sense. You keep the budget as low as possible and the quality is high. And, and, you know, like I told someone this week, I may have that word producer in front of my name, but really nowadays I'm a content provider is yes. what I am. Yes. There, man, there's so many places that, that your comedy uh, uh, things could fulfill. My movies could fulfill. Right. I, I don't have it anymore. My, my daughter gave me one of these, uh, I think it's called a fire stick, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I took out my cable television, but before I did, I was on a, uh, I forget what it was, but there was like three tiers. I was on the middle one with 300 channels. I, may, I maybe watched 12, maybe. And the highest tier was 600, you know, yeah. but every one of those people, man, they need content, yep. you know, they need content. They yeah. need content, no matter what the content. And if you can bridge two things, like anything with animal is good, first of all, and everything. Yeah, so then really bridging. Is comedy with animals and then medicine with animals and then just yeah. a pet a pet health like mine is a pet health podcast it's not about wild animals i you know i only know yeah, dog yeah. cats pocket pets things like that what you're going to bring to an animal hospital but that little niche how many people own pets like millions billions so billions. and who loves comedy everybody so we can everybody man pet, and it doesn't have to be all about pets and it doesn't have to all be about comedy really they're coming for us like you said they're coming for the yeah. personalities they just want yeah. to be entertained, whatever, because they could change the channel so easily. You just have to yeah. make sure yours doesn't sound like someone else's, really. Exactly, man. You, you're you're right on the. By the way, speaking of of, of comics, I, uh, I I watched that David Letterman interview with Dave Chappelle the other oh, night. Man. Wow, okay. you, did you see it? I mean, I'm not sure it, if it's is oh, it very very recent. Yeah, it's pretty. It's very recent. Maybe not. Yeah. I saw the Dave Chappelle monologue on SNL, and that's. I heard, it wasn't, that. I heard it wasn't that great this time. I, I mean, I, I get why people would say that because he didn't get a lot of laughs. But I think Chappelle, yeah. as he gets older, he's not really aiming for the laughs as much as he's trying to educate people. Just yeah, by yeah. The way that he's true. Speaking. Yeah, and uh, you Dude. know, I think people that don't know Dave Chappelle's comedy take him the wrong way a lot of times. Like sometimes he's not joking. Sometimes he's just saying. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's not funny. You're like, yeah, that part didn't mean to be. You didn't mean that part to be. Yeah. I think, well, see, I bring my own yeah. sound effects, hey, hey, man. What's, um, What's the dog's name or his? Uh, bear. Hi, bear. How's it going? By the way, I, I, don't want, I don't tell anyone from Texas this because they already think I'm nuts living out here in, in L.A. But this is a, it, you know, you'd think me from Texas and a manly man like myself, I'd have a Great Dane or a, this is a Yorkie poo. Oh. Wow, you, you went straight Los Angeles on him, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And of course, my daughter—you uh, know—it's she's seven years old. This dog, and 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 she finally wore me down, and I I got the dog for her. And of course, it lasted thirty minutes, you know. And now, but now, like my daughter's got a boyfriend now. She's never here. I'm. I find myself talking to this dog. Oh yeah, man. that's your dog now. That's your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hey, you know what I was going to say? That's interesting. You said that. Uh, I. I I think sometimes, tell me if I'm wrong, but a lot of times comedians are not joking. I mean, they say stuff that comes off funny, but it's, but it, it's really not a joke a lot of times. Oh yeah. It? I mean, I would say 
like it all has to come from truth or it's not really that funny. Like I think when comedians are starting out, yes. they're, they're, they think like a child. You think like a cartoon. Yeah, like yeah. Comedy has to be slapstick or shock value as a young yeah. comic because that's what you think is funny because you're probably 21 and you're adult. Yeah. But as you get older, you realize like you have to entertain more than the college frat guys. You know, you have to be more right. broad than that. You have to have a little bit more perspective. So you can't yeah. have much perspective if you're young. It's just impossible. That's true. So it That's takes a while for comedians to get to the point where they can be honest about things. But in the beginning, it's like a little bit of truth and a lot of joke. And then as the comic matures, it switches. It's a lot of truth and a little bit of joke, but the better they are at comedy. And it depends. Like you have a storyteller that's going to talk for five minutes and then tell a joke, or you have a punchline comic like, like Anthony Jesselnik and he tells a joke every minute, you know, or every 30 seconds, he's got a punchline and that's yeah. a different kind of comic. But I think on both ends, the more true it is, the more funny it is because smart people will realize yeah. that it's harder. It's harder to make something true funny. It's something you're just making yeah. up. That's not that hard to make funny, but something true, you got to yeah. dig. You really got to put your words together properly. Our smart people are going to not laugh. That may, and, and, there, and, and the more truth, the more people get that, right? And can Absolutely. identify with it in their own life. And then the tension builds. Sense. Let's just say when you're speaking truths and people are identifying, there's, they're, they're tense, they're tense. And then you hit the punchline and then the tension is relieved and it's a bigger laugh and it's more lasting. Yeah. They'll remember that later. They're going to think about it later. And that's really what you want, because then they come back. You know, it's so interesting. That's so uh, 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 close to, to, to good acting. You know, I, uh, uh, let me name drop as much as go I ahead, possibly can. Great. But, you know, I spent 11 years uh, with Robert Duvall. And oh, wow. uh, okay. we did like 14 movies up. together. And I, we, we talked hundreds of hours about acting. It was just fascinating, you know, how he got. And, and one thing that he always said, and it's very interesting, he said, you know, if you take all of the acting classes and the books and the videos, everything you've ever learned about acting and put it in a big pot and start boiling it down, boiling it down. He said, acting comes down to two things and two things only. And that's talk, listen, listen, talk. And it all has to be grounded in truth. You know, and it, it, it's interesting. I never thought about that in the comedic world, but it's, it's the same thing, isn't it? It is. I think about that like an actor. They have to find some truth in whatever they're performing. They yes, have to like man. recall a memory or just make it up. What, how would I feel? And how would I really react? And that's, that's right. If I were this character, obviously. And a lot of it is like the more believable, right? Then it's more truthful. But, you know, the, the acting right. part comes and the comedy part comes too, where you don't know as the audience member, you're, you're not sure which part of it is true and which part of it is joke. That's until right. I tell you, unless I let you in on the joke, which is another yeah. part of comedy. Like there's, there's a little bit of this that I, I want you to not be sure of. Was, was he telling the truth on that part? Did he really mean yeah. that part? Like, ah, there's a little bit of mystery. I'm a little bit of a magician. I'm not going to tell you my Yeah, joke. that's true. But, but you you but want then, them to like you and not like you. Like you do want to play both sides. You want them to agree yeah, with you, even though they don't want to agree with you. Interesting. By the way, you, you said punchline. Did you ever see that movie years ago with Sally Field and, and Tom Hanks? And, uh, Tom Hanks? Yeah, of course. It's great. I think it's a oh, great the, movie. I, I have a feeling that's probably pretty real. And, yeah, uh, I think as from what I've uh, heard and what I believe, it's pretty close. I saw that movie and of course I'm, I'm a critic. You know, I thought a stamp comedy yeah. movie is not going to be very accurate, but they did a great yeah. job. Tom Hanks is amazing. What are you going to do? He's great. Yeah. He did a great yeah. job. Sally Field, the world that they lived in, uh, it was, yeah, I think they, they pretty much nailed it as far as a movie goes. Yeah, I, I think it, it seemed to me like they did. And I, I don't know, you know, the behind the scenes. Um, if really, if you get a chance, and, and I'd really recommend watch that latest interview with uh, David Letterman and Chappelle. Chappelle, it, 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 he's, God, the guy's so articulate and so yeah. smart. And yeah. it is so interesting. Yeah, he's my, uh, you know, he's my inspiration. So, That's the whole reason why I started doing stand-up. Oh, so is that right? Dave Chappelle's comedy specials when I was in college. It was just like, I was addicted. Yeah. I was obsessed. And that's how you get good at stuff. You got to become obsessed. You know, it's, I, I recently watched, and I don't know if it was the old one or an updated a documentary on Richard Pryor, man. Mm -hmm. That guy was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, they have he, a new uh, documentary series on Showtime about the comedy store here in West Hollywood. And it's really yeah. interesting. It's about all the people that performed there and came up there and became famous there or were famous before and started working there and how much they appreciated that oh, wow. time 
And there's a lot of it about Richard Pryor. He was such a big influence on the whole comedy oh, world, but his home club was the comedy store. I guess, it, I mean, if it wasn't for Richard Pryor, there wouldn't be like guys like you or Dave Chappelle, would Dave they? Chappelle or Chris Rock, or no, that's the way they tell it, right? I mean, that's what Dave Chappelle huh. says and Chris Rock says and Eddie Murphy says that they came from Pryor. Like that's, they, they were a product of Pryor and Carlin and these guys. Yeah, yeah, well, Carlin was amazing. You yeah, know? the deeper thinkers, not just slapstick, not just, you know, yeah. you know, shocker, this- pals of you stuff. And then, I mean, this was way before your time, but there was the Flip Wilsons of the world, you know, and yeah, people like that that were hilarious. Yeah, the, the I, you know, I mean, times, yeah, like uh, Lenny Bruce gets brought up a lot. Lenny Bruce, like, oh my God, <laughs> man, <laughs> that was something to look up, you know, Lenny Bruce. You know, uh, I met uh, a, a couple of times. I was around Robin Williams. God there bless his go. heart and soul. And uh, man, he, it was, um, it, God, he was like a machine gun, you know. It, yes. it was. I, and I had dinner one night with uh, Eddie Griffin Jr. Oh, wow, and I, wow. I, I said to him, I said, you must be exhausted at night. I mean, he never stops. It's just bam, 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 you know? Yeah. It seems exhausting, somebody like that. But you know, they're just operating at a different level. Yeah. When they're around these uber talented comedians long enough. You just yeah. start to recognize like there's a different level of talent. When it's yeah. like guys like that, they could just fire off jokes. Yeah one after another, right off the top of their head without any effort. It's just the way that they think. Yeah. Like, wow, that's really hard to compete with. But, you know, you're just not them. You can't compete with them. No, you can't, you can you? Or use them, use them somehow, give them opportunity that benefits both of you. That's, I mean, that's why I look at people that are really good at something. Like, how can we, how can we elevate you? You know, we need yeah. to know about you. Well, uh, that's what I do, man. Like, the, I, I, I have no ego about anything. I mean, look at this. How could I have an ego? So I hire everybody I hire around me is a zillion times better than me. Let them do their job. And then I walk the red carpet and I take all the credit. That's I what no I have a problem with that. I think that's a brilliant <laughs> that's a brilliant strategy. I'm right around there. I mean, I was doing stand-up for a long time. Uh, the podcast is something newer because I knew that I didn't want to keep going out. You know, as I'm getting yeah, older, yeah. I'm married. It's really hard to be out in the clubs and not expect bad things to happen. So I yeah. got less and less drawn to that as I did when I was, I started comedy when I was 21. Now I'm 37. So I've wow. changed a lot over that time. My you know? God. And, and now you're, you're able to pretty much make a living at it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow. So, so this, and, and the podcast is, is part of that. You know, we want to bridge yeah. it over where we can yeah. incorporate both and do a lot of animal related events, yeah. you know, as far as yeah. comedy goes or any content, like my wife and I are very animal oriented and we want to involve oh, yeah. ourselves strictly in that just because we know that it's, a, it's always a growing market and there's yeah. an unlimited amount of animals that need help. And every time I uh, involve myself in a project, there's just so much good I can do. There's just so many people out there that don't know anything. Like you said about not feeding the dog where they bend over, feeding a dog. Yeah. Simple advice like that goes such a long way for people. And they just couldn't be more grateful. And you're not asking yeah. them for money, really. You just ask, hey, check out my podcast. And then it all yeah. works itself out. Exactly. And, and listen, man, I think there's people out there like myself. I didn't know I was a dog guy. I had no idea, you know, and, but man, I've turned into a dog guy, you hey, know, and, and I love it. And, 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 you know, more than I, but in the uh, pandemic in this zombie apocalypse, shelters have run out of dogs. Yep. People have just adopted. I just think that's fantastic. I you do know? too. I am a little worried. If you want to hear my devil's advocate uh, perspective, I do worry about if things go back to normal, people that at one point spent all day, every day with their dogs, suddenly are going to leave their dogs home alone for hours and hours and hours while they go to work yeah. might not work out for you guys. Like I think a lot of people need the education before they go out and get a dog because of COVID. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not enough that you're lonely. That's not your, the dog's problem. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But you then on the other the hand, go ahead. People are, have seen now that they can work from home. And I That's think we're going to see you. more of that. I think, you know. I know. You're absolutely right. When, there's no going back. A bunch of businesses have figured out a way to make money without bringing people to work. Why would they, why yeah. would they go back to renting space that they don't and have to rent? great, man. I mean, I, I'm, I don't have any pants on right now. And, and, but <laughs> I, you know, 
It's great, isn't it? I almost did this in my pajamas, but I was like, you know what? I haven't met these people before. Let me go ahead and put on a shirt. <laughs> hey, oh, and by the way, you know, talking about dog movies and in and, 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 and our movie too, uh, investforyfortune.com. I got to remember to do it. But, um, Invest in Prairie Fortune, the movie. What is it? In, investforyfortune.com. Investforyfortune.com. Yeah. And, and then you can read all of that. It's, it's, it's a great site. But, um, uh, you, you know, in normally in a normal situation what you do is is you finish your movie uh if you're in the independent world and then you take the finished product to a distributor and you let them see if they're going to distribute it or if you got to go down the road to the next distributor man one of the distributors i work with i sent the script this never happens man based on just the script alone they've given us a letter of intent to distribute the film it never happens it never had now awesome. at the end of the day I, I have to look out for the investors and i've got to make the best deal you know sure. but the fact that we already have that on the table just based on the script you know says something about sure. family movies and dog movies and and sure. uh, and i've worked with them before and you know they a clear sign that what you guys are doing is good it's working yeah good. Yeah, I idea. think so. You know what we're thinking about too. We've been talking about uh, we're uh, because of the the crowdfunding and the perks and all that. We're, we've got to go through a little bit of a rewrite on the script in January to add certain things. And it came up the other day. It, wouldn't it be nice to maybe add a, a scene with maybe a service dog or something in there? Yeah. You know, because yeah. already the dogs that we ha we've already changed the dog to a, 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 an adopted dog. You know, oh, a rescue yeah. dog. That, right. That's our main. It's going to be a rescue dog. But maybe another scene with like a, a, a service dog or something would be Absolutely. nice. And at least it's mentioned that the service dog and yeah. what it can do, or maybe I don't know the, the the process that it takes to get a service animal, like. It yeah. really is good. I think a lot of people in California know about it, but not everywhere else. Yeah, I think so. I just think it's a, films are, they're a great opportunity, you know, to, to, to use in a positive way. And, uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, until I started talking to Burt Ward, I, you know, I tell people, I, I, I may be slow, I'm from Texas, but I eventually get it. <laughs> no, you know, you talk slow, that's all. <laughs> but uh, and I say that only because I'm a Texan and I can get away with it. But um, I, I didn't really uh, take into consideration, if I'm being honest, you know, if I, like Simon Cowell on uh, on American Idol. If I'm being honest, I didn't take into consideration the thought the the, the things that we could put in there as far as health uh, tips for dogs. Sure. You know, well, it'd you be know. unlimited, right? You would it's have unlimited. too many options. You have to like be really. It's unbelievable. Concerning. Yeah, so they're gonna they're taking the script and they're going through it and and like we said it's gonna be entertaining but organic but I mean well that's a great it's a great opportunity to to do that and educate people. Yeah, I you think. Th you you think maybe just given the opportunity you'd want to at least introduce some ideas maybe just some yeah. exposure to an idea you know yeah. people are like oh I wonder what that's about and go look into it later yeah that you don't have point. to fill up a whole page of a script. Oh yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta make it. It has to be entertaining, and you know. So organic, it has to fit said, in there. Something just mentioned or something in the background, and I mean, it's really hard even for this podcast. Like, if I make it too much about the animal medicine, it's boring. You know, people don't. Yeah. Listen. The episodes. You work, have to be but, careful because you, def yeah. you definitely can turn people off. You know, like, yeah. like for instance, I, I'll just give you an example. I, I've done uh, quite a few faith-based films, okay. and I, I never wanted to do the kind that that like hit people over the head or preach to the choir. To be honest with you, I'm an independent producer. Uh, the money behind some of my faith-based films has wanted that. And, and I was talking to a guy in Nashville a couple of years ago and he said, look, don't, be, don't let that bum you out because there are some people that will only see those kinds of movies, which is true. But I, I try to reach the unchurched, you know? And, and so you have to be very careful because I call it God talk. You can't start talking that God talk too soon because people, the people are turned off to religion, you know, and especially Absolutely. young people. So you have to, it has to come organically. And it's just like with your podcast or, or, or even this, you know, we got to be careful. So things are organic right. and happen in an entertaining way. And the audience is not stupid. You know, I, right. uh, I used to be a, a, a radio disc jockey that, by the way, they told me, they used to say I had a face for radio. <laughs> what? What? Uh, what? No, I disagree. You, you're great. But you look great. They used, to, they used to always tell us, you know, don't talk down to an audience. 
And I think for a long time, for too long, Hollywood and it has talked down to audiences in a way. And audiences are very smart. TV is a good example. I mean, remember not too many years ago, it was kind of like, you know, TV was kind of goofy. You know? But yeah. but man, the writing on television now and some of the acting, it's it's just it's a, it's better than movies, you know, mm -hmm. because they're they're not talking down to the audience. And so yeah, that, well, it's the age of information. People know, like you said, that the audience is not dumb and you have to really no. speak their language. You got to talk at the that's same right. level. That's, and that's, you know, that's a challenge, but you're really, hopefully you're trying to educate as you're trying to entertain. Like that's, that's yeah. the easiest way to not do it on purpose. Like you said, it has to be organic. Okay. How can it, it be does. organic? Well, we must like you think actually be trying to accomplish something good here, teach them something. And you don't think the audience watching now didn't didn't know I didn't have pants on? Of course they didn't. They knew I didn't have pants. Big on. reveal. Well, not, yeah, you know, we guess. <laughs> By the way, how do you like our background? These guys oh, looking. I tell you, it's, it's amazing. It makes me happy. It makes me want to go take my dog for a walk. It makes me want to see the movie. I'm a big yeah. Fan. Some cute we ones. think. We really think. I mean, we really. This this has all the markings to be really a classic. You know, like yeah. like. They call it evergreen in, in the film business. You know, it just keeps, it just keeps going and going for years to come. And yeah, I, I think... good animal movies. Some of the classics, right? You grow up with them when you're a kid. You watch yeah. them like every couple of years. And then you turn your kids onto them. And yeah. it's there forever. Forever. Yeah. Get it? Forever. Get what I did? Yeah, I love that, man. I love it. Uh, you, man, you guys are, you're so, and by the way, it, 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 and I'm not just saying this, man, but, but, but like you can, be proud of this that you're helping us you know i mean it, it, it you really can and, and no, i am uh, proud i was blown away like you were saying when you got the offer that you just were like just happy that it started off better than you would have predicted and the same yeah. thing when i got the contact from jessica when she contacted me i was like oh this must be some kind of scam what do you mean like, <laughs> it's too good to be like well, you, you know, really want to be on my it. little podcast and I was like, okay, let me look into it. And I saw it was a big project. And I was like, wow, this is really awesome. Like, I mean, uh, I'm the one usually reaching out to people. Nobody reaches out to me. But the podcast <laughs> is growing. Like, I've been talking about it for a long time. It keeps growing and growing. Yeah, and, growing. Yeah. and I'm really, and it's very organic. Like, I'm, I'm not putting, you know, you can always do more. You know what I mean? You can yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have plans for the future of what I want to do. But in the meantime, it keeps growing. So it's like, okay, let's just so keep great. riding the wave, see what happens. We got yeah, that deal on now. We're doing great. And you know, it uh, like the big deal out here. I, I never was one to play the game. I mean, you know, you, I just didn't, I, I wanted to kind of have a, a life too, you know, but man, there's, you, you could go out every night and 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 you know connect with people and do all of that stuff i i just never played the game but but it's good to connect with people now like you and i have met and are connected and and you know i'd help you any way i can man i i really believe in in what you're doing and and uh, uh i'd love to be able to okay. be a piece Come of on to a show we got an outside show in inglewood on sunday the 15th it's your daughter's oh, birthday yeah. she's invited uh, but it is an, an outdoor show uh, for comics. It'll be about an hour and a half. And it, this, this episode is going to come out after that. So none of these people are going to hear it. But we're already advertising it. Oh, on. Wow. it it's a fun outside show with some really, really very talented comedians, like people that I'm just honored to share a stage with. Yeah. Like, I want to do the show yeah. that I'm, I'm producing, I'm hosting uh, here in Inglewood. It's called Parks oh, yeah. and Rex. It's an outside park show. Oh, good. I'm going to write that down. Parks and Rex. Okay. Parks and Rex. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, W R C K S Rex. Oh, right. <laughs> that's great, man. In Inglewood, um, you know, I remember years ago. It's interesting; you may not know this, but uh, Robert Duvall and Dustin Hoffman and Gene Hackman were all roommates in New York. No, no, and, no. those are like the Rat Pack. The yeah, yeah, Pack. yeah. And there were some great New York actors. I mean, really great New York actors. And 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 some of them made it, and some didn't. But Bobby Duvall would, would talk about how, you know, those, the ones that did make it were like the, like the cream and how it rose to the top. I, I guess you see that too in, in the comedic world, right? I mean, Absolutely. the cream. There's yeah. no question to the people that are more talented. It's just like, you can't argue it. But like, say I came from Indiana, I was doing comedy there. I was doing comedy in Michigan and Chicago, then in South Korea. So I've done comedy a lot of places. So I thought I knew what talent was. But then yeah, I moved yeah. to Los Angeles, and I was auditioning at these big world renowned clubs. And these guys are coming out of the gate with like a thousand times more talent than I 
have. They have in their little pinky. And it's like, wow, those people are the cream of the crop. You have to, you have to meet them, though, to know that they're regular people. They're just, right. people, just like you. They just have another gear that you don't have. And you just have to really respect Was it intimidating? Them. Were you intimidated seeing that for at first, the first time? At first I was. When I first moved here, I was very intimidated. But as I became friends with those people, you know, they don't have everything going for them. They have that talent, but you have different talents. You know, everybody's good at something. So true, man. Yeah. So you just have to find what you're good at. You have to, you can't, yeah. you can't compare yourself to others. That's the, no. It's horrible. It's just going to defeat you. No. So when I, in the beginning, I just didn't know because I came from where I was a big fish in a small pond. I was the funniest guy in the scene. And then I moved to LA and nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares if you were the yeah. first guy in Indiana yeah. or Korea. Nobody cares. You have to yeah. come there and prove yourself, but you can do it as long as you see what other people are doing that works and try, well, yeah. try to learn from them. It's like, I mean, it's like, you know, people say, oh, God, you're a producer. and blah. Man, it's not brain surgery, you know, and I guess in a word, it's not, I mean, I, I'm not trying to, 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 to downplay yeah, anything, you know. Out. You just got to work. Call my audience a bunch of idiots. It's all right. I'm no, kidding. no, man. But it's just a lot of work, man. You got to work for it, don't you? Yeah. And, all the people that are successful are because they work hard. The ones that are just right. talented make it only so far. It's the ones that have it both, the drive and the ability. That. That's right. I mean, listen, man, look, Jay, hey, <laughs> and, and look at Jay Leno. I mean, I, I, I know as a fact that that guy went to every affiliate in the country before they, before, you know, either before or right when they gave him the Tonight Show or maybe before. He, he worked for it. He worked for it, you know. Yeah, that's the stories I love because I know that's more likely than the Presto Change Your Instagram fame overnight. Like that oh, lightning totally. fast fame. That's like a winning the lottery. You can't play that game. You have to play the no, long man. marathon game. That's and know and know that everything everything happens for a reason and that your time will come unless you quit. It does, man. It, listen, I I uh uh you know, not to get too deep or anything, but but someone told me one time it is written. It is written. So it's already written, you know, and 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 the timing is everything and and I always, you know, I believe in God. I believe in a high, higher power. And I just believe he's in control of everything, you know, and I, I think about that. And, and I, I've, I've gotten to the point now at the risk of sounding like a whack job, if, if, if a door closes, and by the way, there's, no, and I tell my girls, there's not a day goes by that I don't get the rug pulled out from under me, but I, I've learned to live with it and roll with it. But if I have a door shut, I, I immediately say thank thank you God for shutting that door because I wasn't supposed to go through it in so, in my opinion in my mind. Yeah, no, that's know? something my wife and I talk about a lot. Just to try to stay sane in this world. Like just because something yeah. can work out, that should be yeah. clear sign that that's not where you needed to be. You that's don't right. want to be a part of something oh, that's going to end eventually. Then totally. what was the whole point? You don't want to invest your time in that. But it is hard to look at it that way. You know, it is at the it's moment very the moment, hard. You might take it personally, but you shouldn't. That's one of the keys to happiness don't take anything personally oh, God. i know yeah. man and as I, far as I go, to, go ahead go ahead no i was gonna say i you know somehow i, I worked it up in my mind i go to all of my auditions because i've worked it up in my mind nobody this is probably not true or nobody even said this but i said to myself these people come into audition they're 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 we're seeing someone every five minutes they're driving two hours in la traffic to get there so i go to all of my auditions because i think well they appreciate a producer being there you know i don't know if that's true or not but 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 man they will go through a hundred no's before they get a yes and I, I say you can't take it personally i mean how could you take it personally because you're there maybe five minutes they don't even know you right. but it gets it, it gets hard not to take it personally doesn't it yeah and uh, earlier you mentioned like how much money do i make doing comedy it's so inconsistent i have a job you know i'm a teacher i teach at a at a medical oh, school right right yeah so i teach oh that takes the load off yeah program and it is a teaching job is so nice when you're a comic because i get to talk Again, oh. I get to practice talking and I teach at a college. So I'm teaching adults. They're not children. And it's, it's nice. It's really great. I have a great schedule, so I, I can't complain, but uh, you know, I just refuse to let comedy limit me. The thing was with comedy, it's so inconsistent, the pay that you can't have a normal life. And if I don't have a normal life, I can't, yeah. wait, I can't sleep. I can't focus. I can't yeah. be happy. So of I have course. to like, get a, a lot of, and you know, as you get older, you need more stability. So as my you stability do, yeah. increased, then my writing got better. 
my comedy improved and the podcast started doing better. Everything fell into place, but you had to, I had to keep trying new things. Try yes. this, it didn't work. Try this, it didn't work. Try this, it didn't work. Try this, okay, this works. Keep doing this for a while, yeah. see how that goes. And, right. and I've yeah. fallen ass backwards into so many opportunities that way that I have to keep doing it. I have to keep trying. Everything just falls into place if you keep moving you have forward. To, man. And thank God for that day job, man, because that Absolutely. takes the pressure off. You know? Absolutely. You know, you said something. Go ahead. I was going to say you said something about being happy. Uh, the, the very first movie I produced, uh, so here, I stand by for other uh, drop, <laughs> dropping of names here. Love that. You know? But uh, people say, I don't want to drop names. I love it. But Billy Bob Thornton and Tom <laughs> Epperson wrote the very first script I ever produced called The Family Thing. And and uh, we got to be friends. And man, I bet it was 20 years ago, or, or 15 years ago. So I, I'm at Tom Epperson's house and um, I was having dinner and I'm like, oh God, man. I, I said, Tom, man, what's it all about? What's it all about? And he, and he kind of looks for a minute and he says, it's about being happy. And, and, and I'm telling you, man, 15 or 20 years later, I, I think I'm just now understanding that. It's weird, man, when you get older, you know? No, I think so, too. It is like that. You, you, you can't, I don't know, like we were talking about earlier, it's hard to be honest with yourself when you're not happy. You, like, you have more yeah. of a tendency to lie to yourself and, uh, you know, just inflate things or make a bigger deal about something than it is or spend way too much time thinking about something than you should oh. if you're not happy. But if you're happy, it's easy to like something bad will happen, you let it go. So the good Absolutely. happens to appreciate yeah. it. And it's, it's really a, a, it's a mind frame that I think it's really difficult when you're an artist. We all know artists are, are sensitive. We're putting our heart into our content. If it doesn't do what we want it to do, we're going to take it personally. But, you know, the smart people try again, try again, try again. Right. And you some people, you know, to. And they, man, they, I'm sorry. Sometimes they overlap on this. No, but but you, I is, swear, man, this is so weird. You must be reading my mind because <laughs> I, I'm thinking of stuff in your brain. But um, I was just going to say this about the thing that we have, you and I and people in my business and your business, is we all have this heart of an artist. And man, that's a tough one because not everybody understands that. Not everybody has it and not everybody understands it. And the, the, the most weird thing in a way that I found is the people closest to me, like my family, totally don't get it. They totally <laughs> don't get it. Like my mom, she passed away a few years ago. She lived out in Midland, Texas, and whatever film I had, you know, oh, golly, we're all excited to see it, you know, bring it on out, and, and so I'd take a DVD out, man, this used to break my heart, but man, I finally got it, I said, they, they don't have this heart of an artist, man, they put my film in that maybe I've spent, you know, three or four years working on, I could set my watch, man, 15 minutes into, into it, well, uh, what do y'all want for supper tonight? You know, and, and, and it, okay. but they don't okay. understand. They don't, you know what I have you, you know what I mean? I mean, of course. I have my comedy special out on YouTube and I have family members that have never seen it. And I'm like, you don't love me. I, you don't <laughs> care about me. <laughs> but, but it's not personal. They true. don't, obviously, have, it's not true. They, they don't just have don't that part of an artist. They don't understand that, like, a, if they would just watch it and share it, that I might get a couple of thousand more views. You know, they don't, they don't yeah. understand how it works. Like if you just uh, they, care they a little bit, you they can bring out a lot, but you don't get it. You don't they get, just, it. get it. And, they, and if they got it, they would, man. It would. It, my, I told you my mom passed away a few years ago until the day she died. She would say, well, honey, what do you do for a living? You know, I finally start. I, I, I just quit trying to explain to her because she never got it anyway. The only thing she wanted to do is sit in a movie theater and watch my name in the credits, you know? Oh, yeah. But that's, a, that's a big moment for a mom. It know? is, you know. <laughs> but we have to fulfill that artist heart, you and I, and the people around, you know, in our business. We have to fulfill that. And it's tough, man. It's tough sometimes. But, but, but like you, you said, you have to keep you have to keep moving forward. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You keep meeting people, or I do. I meet people that inspire me around here. That's the one beautiful thing I love about Los Angeles that I don't get every other artist community I've been a part of. In LA, you're always going to meet mm -hmm. people that have heard, like that are more talented than I am, I can say subjectively or objectively, and they're not also not getting opportunities like they deserve. So you're in the same boat. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's like as long as I know that it's, yeah. not, it's not about the opportunities that you're given. It's about the opportunities you create for yourself. 
You, you have to do that. I mean, I talk to, to people all the time, you know, they're sitting back waiting on it to come. It's never going to come, man. Yet you, you've got to make it happen. And that's what I, I, I like about independent films. I'm not, I mean, the two hardest things about independent films are raising the money and distribution. And somehow I've managed to, to everything I've ever done has been distributed and, and I've been able to put money together to do films, but, uh-huh. but, but you, you, you have to make it happen. And that's what's so exciting about, about for young, you know, like young comedians or, or young filmmakers. I mean, you can go to the Walmart and get a broadcast quality camera or even an iPhone. Now you can write a script, make a movie, edit it on your computer at home. And the next thing you know, you're in a film festival. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's what, we heard this back in 2010. I remember people telling, oh, just take out your iPhone and make a movie. But yeah. I didn't believe it. I didn't, I was like, ah, I can't be that yeah. But then so many people made names for themselves off of something like that. I was like, okay, I need to get on board and stop making excuses. Like really, yeah. if you yeah. want to make it happen, you have the internet, you have a smartphone, you can do it. No big deal. And then I started Absolutely. putting content out and that's what keeps you alive. It keeps you alive. It just is, trying, man. trying something new, trying something new. It is. And I tell you something, I think I, I talked to different directors and they kind of poo poo the idea of doing a movie on the iPhone. That's just ego, man. They want to see that camera and all that. So that's ego. Not necessary, man. This is 2020 technology. Oh man. I love the idea. And, and next year I'm going to try to, to do something just Have you like seen that. the movies made on the iPhones. Have you seen these? It's amazing. They're amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. So amazing. How do it is amazing. And, and by the way, man, like now we can, we can own our own equipment, you know, with an iPhone or yep. the, the thing about, and, and it's, and it's true in films and you should probably watch this in, in your uh, 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 comedy uh, videos and things. The first telltale sign of a low budget movie is sound. You yep. can never skimp on sound. I yep. never do. That's you what we say for uh, like my comedy, everybody's comedy album. Like, fuck the, uh, fuck the video. We need the good audio. People are oh, listening yeah. to the jokes. If they can't understand the jokes, oh, man. it doesn't matter yeah. if it looks great. The audio yeah. is most important. So for my, my comedy album, I hired an audio engineer that did my cinematography. Like he, he could oh. do cinematography, but he was an audio engineer as his professional background. So I was like, oh. all right. As long as you can make the audio sound good, we can edit it to make it look decent. Absolutely, man. Just standing there. You just stand there. Yeah, absolutely. We're about to take I, our first break. You okay with that? Okay. We're going to take yeah, a break. When we come back. We'll wrap up. Uh, we're, we got about another 20, 30 minutes to wrap up. Okay. Uh, we got a couple of segments, and so we'll get into those. But right now, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back. I'm going to run to the bathroom, all right? Okay. I'm uh, wearing those massive diapers, so I'm just going in my pants, you know? I need to get there. I need an indwelling catheter or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll run, too, to the bathroom. All right, I'll be back. Go. All right, we're back in. Thank you, guys. Great. We're a little break with us. We're back with Brad Wilson. Brad, we're here. We're talking about the, the furry fortune. Uh, we're about to start wrapping up. You want to be a part of uh, my two segments? You don't have a chance. Yeah. You have to be a part of them. Okay, are you ready? Okay, the I'm only ready. segment that involves you really is uh, we always ask the guests how they feel about eating meat. How do you feel about eating meat? You know what? I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that question. Uh, this coming December, in a, in a, another month, will be four years that I haven't eaten meat or chicken. Wow, congratulations. That's so awesome. Thank you. I feel good about it. You know, I, I did it for health reasons, but then I started loving my dog more and animals more. And I, I, I feel happy about it. Now I do eat fish sometimes, you know, but I, I, I don't eat the meat. And by the way, this is, that's another thing I can't tell my Texas friends that I don't eat meat. Are you kidding me? My God, they have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner down there. I don't know. Absolutely. No, I'm a big meat eater. Not a, not a big meat eater, but I do eat meat. I'm a carnivore, but I try to limit it. I try to be conscious of it and I try to be thankful for the animals, you know, yeah. that I'm eating and yeah. just being appreciative and understanding the, the process that meat goes through yeah. before it gets to my refrigerator is pretty awful. And just keeping that in mind. And it just really decreases the amount of animals that I'll eat in my lifetime. And that's right. all I really focus on just trying yeah. to have some kind of a positive turn back on how I grew up. I grew up with, you know, meat was the primary meal. Yeah. Carne, carne, carne baby. Carne, salad, carne, everything. And, you know, and I'm still all about the meat. Don't get me wrong, but oh, no. conscious of it and try to spread the consciousness 
And hopefully one day, I think uh, LA, we see it here in California and Los Angeles, the, the trend is to be more light on the meat consumption uh, and yeah. eat more fish and to eat more <clears throat> big time to be here. more healthy. And uh, oh my God. That, that's the kind of trend that I want to help perpetuate. Yeah. You know, of all the trends that you could be a part of, no stupid TikTok dances for me. I want people to be more conscious about their meat consumption and where their meat. Yeah. I think it's helped me a lot. You know, I think it, let me tell you, man. So the, the Justin Ward, the director of the furry fortune, he was in Dallas this last week uh, doing a commercial. Uh, and so to my horror, horror and surprise, he tells me he went to a, a vegan Tex-Mex restaurant. I swear, that's in Texas, man. That's, that's illegal. That is illegal in Texas. Can you believe that? I mean, how good could it be without the lard and stuff? And uh, man, you get, you, when, when I first moved to Los Angeles and I was eating vegan and vegetarian, I had the, the, the lowest expectations, but it's pretty good. You can find a good choy, a soy chorizo burrito and all this soy product. Really? Yeah, man, they could do, dress it up and make it pretty good. It's not as good as regular chorizo. I'm not saying yeah. that but it's good. It's edible. And it's nice to just like have other options sometimes. You well, know? it's true, man. Just I'm go to a restaurant and try something new. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what I really miss. I, I, even more than the barbecue, I miss the Tex-Mex. You oh, know, yeah. It's a different kind of Mexican. And I, I just don't know where one is in, in LA. I've never found one. I've never heard of it. Tex-Mex, because there's so much fusion Mexican food here. It's a lot of Asian Mexican fusion here. That's the big fusion. Yeah, isn't that? Do you know what Tex-Mex is? It's it's basically a lot uh, that that yellow cheese, a lot of yellow <laughs> cheese. <laughs> no, is that is that what it is? Yeah, it's the yellow cheese Mexican food. Hey, sounds good to me though. I think, <laughs> I think all the food coming out of Texas just sounds good. It just sounds like things oh, no, every day no, in Texas. It, it, I mean, you know, I'm I'm a C cup, you know, because I grew up in Texas, man. <laughs> Yeah, so I never try to tell people like not to eat meat, just to think about it a little bit more. Yeah. The only segment, how do you feel about it? Because I, I take breaks from meat. I feel like that's a good way to go about it. Yeah. Breaks. Some meals are just meat free. Some of my meals are vegetarian or vegan. Just yeah. Just, puzz, just to force myself to eat more vegetables and to save yeah. some animals out there. You know, I can't look at a cow and tell you it's not cute. Cows are pretty cute. <laughs> I know it, man. I know. I feel bad. But when I, think, I, uh, when I thought filthy, you were. I was going to say, jokingly, people should just own their own animals. Like, if we all had land, we could all have our own animals that we could farm yeah. meat. And that would be ideal, but there's no land like that around here. There's no, I mean, like my daughter calls them, the McMansions. They have to build up here. There's no land. Man, when I, before, before I learned you were not Korean and doing this podcast on dogs, I, I had a lot of one-liners that I was sitting on, but, you know, they, they would have been not very tasteful. You know, I used to do a lot of roast battle at the comedy store, and people would make fun of me that all the time because it, go, it goes together. Albert used to live in Korea. He works with dogs. Boom, there's a joke. It came up every single time. Some kind of animal I love it, or dinner. No, it's hilarious. That's I mean, great. It's just it's just a joke, but it's it's really funny. I never, uh, you know, I always knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah. You knew that joke was coming, but this one makes it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you knew it was. For sure. Every time. I love it. And it's hilarious. Okay, so the other uh, segment on here is people actually send me pet questions on the internet. Do you? You have a dog? Do you have any pet health questions? Um, well, you know, I, one of the, 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 my dog has one, uh, kind of a health problem. Um, uh, and I've, I've looked online and it seems like this breed, this happens, but her, she has her, I have to clean her eyes every day. They cake what? over and, and to the point, sometimes when she's sleeping, I mean, she wakes up and can't see. And so someone recommended some drops. So I, I clean her eyes and do the drops every day. I had a vet. That, that's pretty well known to rip people off here in my area. And they tried to tell me she had inverted eyelashes. I was going to say entropion. Entropion is when their eyelids are in. So their eyelashes grow into their eyeballs. That's so a real that's thing. A legit, it's legit then, a legit yeah, thing. It's pretty common on those little dogs that have a lot of fur around their face and eyes. Hello? It is pretty common. Now the surgery is not a guarantee though. They can try to fix it with surgery, but a lot of times those sutures... They, it flips back in eventually over the, the dog's lifetime. 
But uh, what I recommend is just keeping them clean, keeping them groomed. And really, it depends on how bad the condition is. Some of the dogs, it's so bad that, you, that they need surgery. Other dogs, you can maintain it by cleaning it daily. Some right. drops, like that's pretty good to maintain. How old is this dog? I think around seven. Okay, so she's I getting think around there. seven. He, Here, look, she's, uh, it's a she. Let me, let me, she's down here underneath me. Go ahead, let me meet her. Just, look at my microphone's falling like a hillbilly. Uh, <laughs> and I just, I just got her groomed and, and they cut her really short. And I, I actually think she looks uh, pretty cute, but. Here's Aww. Her. Oh my God. So we got her, uh, I got her groomed. And I could barely hear you now. I think you turned down your mic. Oh God. Can you hear me at all? Better, but it's still pretty quiet. Better? I think so. Okay. Um, she, uh, we cut, she got cut pretty short. And so she was like shaking, man. She was like cold. <laughs> so my daughter and I had to go get her a little sweater, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The sweater is super cute. My dog wears a little sweater when it's cold out in these California cold 40-degree nights, cold to us. Oh, I see the crusting in her eyes. I can see it. Yeah. I just cleaned them a while ago, too, you know. But Yeah, unfortunately, really like that, that condition that the doctor was telling you of, that entropion is, is pretty common in these breeds that just have the terrier breeds that have a lot of fur around their face. It is common and it's really hard to manage. It really is. It's just like daily cleaning, daily maintenance, uh, warm compresses on the eyes, like warm, wet washcloth. If you just like lay it on there for a while, let it soak up some of that and then you can clean it out easier. You just don't want it to get crusty and infected. Like if it, if it crusts up too much, it sticks to the skin. And then when you try to remove it, it like rips off skin with it and it'll bleed. So you want to try to avoid that. Well, that's a great tip, man, to just put the washcloth on. Yeah, warm, wet washcloths. Let it soak there for 10, 15 minutes, and then you can get a little comb and comb out those eye boogers, and it's less traumatic than trying to pull them out or cut them out. Oh, that's great. I, that's terrific. Thank yeah, you. Little advice like that. And I'm still having a hard time hearing you. I'm sorry, Brad, but you're very quiet now. I'm not sure what happened. Hey, if I take this out, can you hear me now? Yeah, way better. Now you're super loud. Okay, I'm sorry. Better to be loud than quiet. I can turn you down. Oh, good. Okay, I I, I had this I had this uh, uh, snowball thing plugged in, and I don't know what happened. A great USB mic. I'm not sure either. I'm not worried about it. We're almost actually done here, so that's a a great time for us to have technical problems. So I just almost to... time to get the hook. Yep. Sorry, man. It happens to everybody. The show's gotta end. So the other. Oh, you know, I was going to ask you one thing. You know who who was my hero years ago when I was young was Soupy Sales. Did you ever hear of Soupy Sales? Uh-uh. Who's that? He was a comedian and uh, had a kid's TV show, and I've got a couple of his albums, you know. I'll tell you, some great albums are those Bob Newhart albums from back in the day. Yeah, the Bob Newhart. I bet those are great. You should, uh, in, you got some Instagram content. Later on, we're going to get some uh, social media stuff from you. Do you have, like, Twitter, Instagram stuff for the film? Uh, yes. Uh well, we have Facebook, I think. I don't think yeah, you guys we do have online. Twitter, Instagram up yet. We'll, we'll tell people about that. Uh, so okay. The questions other people had. Somebody was asking me about uh, Boston Terriers. The question says, this is from my friend Michael, Michael Brown. I met him in South Korea. He was a comedian. He said, huh? I love a Boston Terrier. One of these dogs for the kids this year, but I think they're a little expensive. I was also reading because they are bred to have squished heads, that they might suffer more health problems, eyes and breathing, etc." Feedback. And this is absolutely true for uh, anybody who wants to order, uh, a, a, not order, own a Boston Terrier or a French Bulldog or an English Bulldog or a Pug. The, the, the squished heads, they, they call them the brachycephalic breeds. And the brachycephalic breeds have the, in, the inbred breathing issues and eye problems, but mostly breathing respiratory issues. They can't breathe very well. That's why they snort and snore and grunts a lot. People think it's cute, but it's really an animal struggling to breathe. Hey. It's not cute. So no, not at all. Them. Yeah, so the, these breeds are ultra expensive to buy because they're a very popular breed, and then they have a ton of health issues. So they're gonna cost you a lot of money over the life of that animal. And uh, it's a cute breed, it's a great breed, but there are a lot of other breeds that don't have those issues that were bred into them. This breed 
is man-made. It's not a dogs don't normally have no nose. This dog is bred to yeah. that way. And if people were to breed them properly, it would be less of an issue. But we have too many backyard breeders that are just perpetuating these horrible breeds that can't be. Yeah. And then they end up being uh, being given away or sent to the shelter or given up because people can't afford the health issues and people don't want to deal with an animal that has all these health problems. So it becomes so, a sad situation for these cute little dogs. The Boston Terriers, if you don't know, they have a great personality. They're great dogs, but the breeding is meant for them to have respiratory issues. Mm -hmm. so we, we try to hey, ban certain breeding, like these brachycephalic breeds. There's a lot of people out there that are pro-banning breeds which I am, and I know it's controversial, but working with these dogs is really hard. It's really hard to help these dogs when they have breathing problems because mm -hmm. it's their anatomy, it's their normal anatomy. So you can't really do a lot for them. You just kind of monitor and manage and maintain. And it's sad, I think, it's sad. If I'm listening to this dog grunt and snarl or snort oh, and snore sure. all day, it's like, can you imagine every time he try to breathe is Oh my God, time. no. Day and sometimes, night what you do. at night, sometimes I, it, I, my dog kind of like does that a little bit, you know. Like, you have a littler terrier dog, so these are terriers, also, right? So, Boston Terrier, your little dog is like a terrier, but it's a, a, a Yorkie Poo. Say that again, a Yorkie Poo, Yorkie Poo, yeah, Yorkie Terrier and a Poodle. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> and those uh, terrier breeds, they're smaller, they're lower to the ground, so they're breathing in a lot of dust and dirt a lot of times. And they're and they're used to sniffing around. They're little mousers, you know. That's what they're bred for. Yeah. Out little vermin. So they're gonna breathe in a lot of dirt and pollen and grass. Uh, 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 Interesting. And cause them some respiratory issues for that. And a lot of them develop allergies from stuff like that too. Wow. Makes that's them have those reverse sneezing, kind of coughing fits, like asthma type type symptoms. Mm -hmm. that's normal for a little terrier dog. My gosh, you know, my neighbor uh, has a great heart. She fosters dogs and uh, man, it's some, it, it, it's pretty sad sometimes some of the dogs that come in, but she's got a good heart. Yeah, I really and, love people that do the fostering, the fostering yeah. adoption. Yeah. You know, it's just a huge service to the animal world and not enough people do it. And some people that like me, I would love to foster. I would love to, but I live in an apartment and I can't. Yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, people like me out there that really want to help and are limited in how I can help. So this is a way that I help the podcast. I do a lot of volunteering for uh, low income or homeless people that have pets where we do vaccinations for free. I'm actually doing one tomorrow. Wow. Tomorrow. Bless your heart. Where is it? It's like um, somewhere up north. It's e it's Little Rock. I think it's called Little Rock. It's up in, like in north in the mountains, like Mm -hmm. somewhere in, in like the, the somewhere above the the mountains i've never been over there it's like an hour and a half drive god bless you man yeah you got it, a great it, heart it's so easy it's so easy to help these people and they they get so much out of the help and it's really like stuff that i could do with my eyes closed to help these people and they're just super <laughs> super uh, supportive and appreciative and it's just a great thing to do uh, that's what it's about isn't it about helping others and and it, and it well, you, good. you got a little connection. You make little connections with people yeah. and you get opportunities from that. And some of them are better than others, but it's like you keep growing your, you grow your, your little fan base, you want to call it, of people that appreciate your help. It's like, okay, I, I, like, yeah. that. I like that feeling. I do too, man. Well, I, I'm really serious. If there's anything I could ever do to help you in any uh, of these things you're doing doing i mean i'm i'm, I'm here right now, for you. we're gonna put this episode out it's gonna kill it's gonna do great and then we're gonna have you on for a second episode after the movie maybe and have another oh one. thank you i would love to so i got, I got oh i'd love that man from the internet are you ready for this one sure this is from my friend mitch i went to high school with mitch uh he i think he lives in florida now he says my dog is only five pounds and doesn't really go anywhere his question is about a leptospirosis vaccine Leptospirosis is a virus that's, that's uh, spread in dirty water that animals pee in. Like if a raccoon or a, a fox or another dog that's not vaccinated has leptospirosis, this virus that's in the wild, it's just in the dirt. They can pee in the water and if another animal drinks that water, like from a puddle or a stream or a lake or whatever, they can get this leptovirus that really shuts down their kidneys. So the question Gee. is about lepto, he's asking. My dog is only five pounds and doesn't really go anywhere but my backyard or not far from us when traveling. The vet recommended it and we gave her the booster and she seems very slow and weird. But I read some back and forth on especially for small dogs. 
So this is kind of a two-part question. Vaccinating small dogs is tricky. They can get vaccinated, vaccine overload pretty easily. We're going to give the same That's amount hard. of vaccine to a Great Dane as we would to a five-pound Chihuahua. So we have to be careful about overloading them. We want to do vaccines in stages. For a big dog, you might be able to do them all at once. For a little dog, you would do a few this week, a few next week, a few the week after that, and kind of space them out. Uh, but for this lepto, it depends where you live. If you live in a place where there's a lot of wildlife, you need it more. If you live in a place where a lot of people are not vaccinating their pets, you need it more. Now, if you live in the middle of nowhere and it's just you and your pets and there's no wildlife around, then you probably don't need it. But how many people live in that environment? There's probably unvaccinated animals around. There's probably raccoons and possums and uh, cats or whatever in your neighborhood that could have it. So it's really like up to you. These kinds of vaccines, it's just like vaccinating your kid. Like the doctor could try to sell you on it. The internet could sell you on a different idea. I could sell you on a different idea, but it's really up to you. Do you want to vaccinate your pet for something that it might never come in contact with? It's like the COVID vaccine. Are you, do you really want to get vaccinated for something that you might never get? Or do you want to vaccinate just to be safe? But vaccines have their own side effects. So it's like, you never know. It's right. a really difficult choice to make. Do you, do you Would you recommend, because uh, I have some friends that, <clears throat> had a dog that kind of lost its mind and and they feel like that the dog got uh too much of uh, 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 you know wavy shots too too much of a shot too early and they did some kind of research is is it okay to continue to get wavy shots for your dog through the years or? well it, there's there's uh you know two two schools of thought on it like you you can definitely give animals one year rabies or a two year rabies, like a rabies vaccine that lasts a year or another one that lasts two years or another one that lasts as much as three years. So these, these vaccines, they're all the same. It's just a matter of how long the antibodies stay in your body to an active amount. Like there's just gotta be enough antibodies that it can fight the disease. So a lot of people choose to do titers where they check the animal's blood titer level for a particular antigen or antibody and they can see, okay, this animal has enough to protect it from rabies for another year. So I don't need the vaccine. But the vaccine is $15. The titer test is $90. So you're like, hey. if you're a poor person, you might as well just get yeah. the vaccine even though you might not need it. If you have yeah, yeah. If $90 is nothing to you, then you might as well get the titer and see if you need it or not. And it just depends on what you can afford. But if you have, in my opinion, and I'm probably gonna lose my vet tech license for saying this, if you have an adult dog or adult pet and it's been vaccinated several times in its adult life, like several full vaccine series. By the time your dog is seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, it really doesn't need those anymore. It's, it's very little chance it's gonna come in contact with other animals. Yeah, it makes sense. It doesn't have enough passive immunity or active immunity to cover itself from those kind of diseases. And then as yeah. the animal gets older, their immune system is weaker. So to keep vaccinating them is really putting a strain on that immune system that's not necessary if you have a dog that doesn't go anywhere. If you have yeah. It doesn't go anywhere. It just stays with you. You walk it in your backyard, you bring it back in. You really don't need to keep vaccinating it. But then the one out of a million chance you take your dog for a walk and another dog comes and bites it, or you take your dog on a hike and a raccoon comes out of nowhere and they start fighting, then suddenly you wish you got that rabies vaccine. But yeah. It's a really rare situation. It's pretty rare. Yeah. God, man, you're so, this is great. I love this. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah. Here's something depressing. I went to, uh, you know, at a certain age, and, uh, you know, so I got a pneumonia shot the other day. So somebody said, get a pneumonia. So the guy, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. The guy says, well, you'll never have to get another one the rest of your life. And I thought, man, if I'm not depressed enough already about being an old guy, you know, so I'm going to have to get another one. You'll ever need, buddy. <laughs> What in the world, man? Hey, that's what a dog at the age of seven is like a man at the age of 50. Like, it's your time is coming, you know. It's like, you're not gonna oh my you gotta god, start looking at the reality. And that's sad for people when we tell them about their dog at seven is considered a senior pet at seven. So, anything I know, seven, man, I know you should just be grateful. If your dog lives to be eight, that's a great life for a dog. If yeah, your dog lives to be 10, that's a great life. And yeah, yeah. 15, 16, 20, that's possible. But don't have your heart set on that. They all get sick as they get older. They yeah, they do. It's just a bless their heart. Heart. Yeah, and that's what you know. That's my job. My job is to make let people have realistic expectations. I find the reason why a lot of animals end up in the shelter is because people don't have realistic expectations. 
So even though it might yeah. be a hard truth, a difficult truth, That's true. it's better that you know what it's really like to own a pet the proper way. And I know that you can disagree with me what's proper and what's improper to raise a pet, but not very much. I'm pretty, I'm pretty across yeah. the board, like what is proper pet care that you can really argue with me. It would be hard for you to argue with me. Um, of course, you know, man. There's different schools of thought. You can have the outside dog. You can have the inside dog. You can have the dog that's both. You can have the dog that does a job that actually herds sheep or, you know, yeah. or something. It's not the same as your little chihuahua puppy that lives in your purse. Those are two yeah. kinds of dogs. Yeah. How, My, different mine's things. a house dog, and, and I've got her trained to pee pee pads, hey. you know? <laughs> there you go. So we both use the pee pee pads now. <laughs> Yeah, you just wrap yours around your waist and call it a diaper. There you go. That's right. <laughs> the NASA diaper. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. This was this all my segments. We're about to wrap it up here. Man, I've loved so it. Thank you, Brad. You're uh, a great you. guy, man. Yeah, this was an excellent time. Uh, is there anything else out there that, that we can go check out for the Furry Fortune? I know you want to drop the, the dot .com one more time. Yeah, just if you could just go to invest furryfortune.com here's the furryfortune.com yeah uh, and and that would be great we'd appreciate it and you could read all about the movie and man i i have really enjoyed this you're a great guy man and great heart and uh, I, I really appreciate you helping us out on this and, and telling Absolutely. people thank you guys for reaching out and you know everybody out there check out the podcast this will be episode 44 or 45 i think something like that and it'll come out on monday november 16th and uh, we look forward to the furry fortune coming out. When's the release date for this? Any any kind of? Well, we'll start. We're going to start shooting mid March, and uh, so it'll probably be the end of the year, first part of next year. You know, it so takes a one. Yeah, it, it, probably like something like that. Yeah. All right. Well, we just want to be invited to the premiere. Remember that. Oh, I want you to come, man. I want you. And we'll bring my dog. I want you to. I and I mean that too. That's I really. Awesome. Cool, cool. Well, that, thank you so much. We, we love to have anybody out there. You got you want to talk about dogs, come on the podcast. Send me an email, petpeacepodcast at gmail.com. If you have any pet questions, send them to the Gmail or to the Instagram or to the Twitter. You can find the Pet Peeves Podcast on Instagram at Pet Peeves Podcast, on Twitter at Pet Peeves Pod. You can find me, Albert Escobedo, on Twitter at Albert Escobedo uh, and Instagram at Albert Escobedo. And you can find my comedy special, one hour long comedy special, free to watch on YouTube called Don't Judge Me. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Brad, one more time. Thank you. See you guys on the next episode. God bless you, man.